I'm a retro gamer born in the late 80s, but that doesn't mean I hate modern gaming. Here's 14 relatively recent games that left an impact on me in no particular order, keeping in mind that I haven't played everything recently. Number 14, Watch Dogs Legion. Sure, it kind of failed at what it was trying to sell and has horrible voice acting, but the idea of recruiting anybody was pretty neat, and the gameplay gimmicks like cloaking and drone control were worth the investment. The DLC was particularly nice as well as a fan of the Watch Dogs series. Number 13, Watch Dogs 2. That's the order in which I played them, Legion before 2, and I was pleasantly surprised how much better 2 was overall. The characters were all highly memorable and the soundtrack was fantastic. It might be a bit of a reach to think hackers can change the world and take down a mega corporation, but it's a fun, lighthearted ride the whole way through. Number 12, The Long Dark. I poured hundreds of hours into the survival mode and story mode of this game, and the atmosphere still sends a chill down my spine when the blizzards really kick up and blind me to even the closest landmark. There may not be much to the gameplay, but the fear of death around any corner, loneliness, and the outstanding weather effects propel this game to a realm what no retro technology can reproduce. Number 11, Starlink Battle for Atlas. I was highly opposed to this game since the internet foolishly thinks it's a canonical Star Fox game and that hurts my inner Star Fox fan, but I was delighted by what it did bring and suggest for a future Star Fox. The multiple playable characters with unique abilities was a step in the right direction, and the cutscenes and banter were on point the whole time. Nothing quite feels as good as taking down a dreadnought, too. Dare I say the planet exploration had slightly more to offer than the late Starfield, too. Which brings us to number 10, Starfield. Let's talk about it. The story is compelling to say the least, but it's the characters that really sell it and keep you on board. The exploration is a bit of a letdown as there's not much to do, but the combat is fun and engaging from start to finish, and the main city hubs do contain a lot of quests that are fun to complete, especially the city Neon. Mostly the Skyrim base of this game with the leveling up of certain perks and having every action gain experience without it feeling like a traditional RPG is what attracts me most to the game. Number 9, Resident Evil 2. Sure, it's a remake, but it's a damn good one. The game itself is an improvement on the first Resident Evil by quite a lot just based on the weapons and scenarios, and it just felt really good to run through as both characters and see what changes. It made me realize that if I played the original way back when I had the GameCube remake of the first game, that I would have liked this one much better. Number 8, Metroid Dread. As a mega fan of Super Metroid, this was way more exciting to me than any new Metroid Prime game, and it didn't really let me down. Although the sequence breaking is less amazing and more intentional than Super Metroid, it's still a fantastic world with a haunting atmosphere and cool abilities. It's nice that in a sea of modern games there are still retro gems like this. Number 7, Kana, Bridge of Spirits. This was my most anticipated PlayStation 5 game, and even though it may not have much replay value, the first playthrough is a touching and captivating experience that blends the best of modern gaming with the tried and true gameplay of classic action adventure platformers. The cinematics are absolutely stunning, and the game made me cry at one point. Pac-Man can't do that, and so my time with this game stands out as noteworthy. Number 6, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. This game just looks and feels beautiful. As a fan of Jet Force Gemini on the N64, this feels like the next step for the genre, and it just feels good to grind on rails while blasting away at swarms of bad guys. If I was a young kid with very little gaming history, this one might easily become one of my favorite games of all time, but even with all my gaming history, I still appreciated what this game did. Number 5, Spider-Man on PS4. This feels as modern as it gets, where the game has little replay value but gives it all into the story for the first go-around. And man, that story and action it packs is so good. I found myself really feeling like Peter Parker and falling in love with Mary Jane just based on how well it's acted out. I came to this game late, but I immediately saw why it was hyped up. Sorry to cook and run. Did, did you just leave your clothes on the kitchen floor? Uh... Where, where do you want me to... Uh... Just the couch is fine. <laughs> See you later? Yeah. Number 4, Subnautica. Man, this is another one I came too late, but instantly fell in love with. Not only is the atmosphere a mixture of creepy and soothing, but the whole thing is underwater survival, which is a theme that speaks to me. 
The game does Atmosphere so well that even though I've beaten it multiple times, I'm always still afraid to replay it. And I'm still always afraid of the deepest parts of the ocean. Number 3, Subnautica Below Zero. After experiencing the first Subnautica, I absolutely had to see what the sequel added. I think gameplay-wise the sequel is better, but the story pacing of the first game is still superior. Nevertheless, Below Zero adds a whole new composer to create a fresh atmospheric adventure that sounds as chilling as it looks. Just like the first game, I'm afraid to go back and replay this one just because of what lies beneath. Number 2, Stardew Valley. I had to include it, man. As a longtime fan of Harvest Moon 64, once I got past the limited graphics of Stardew Valley, I saw what everyone was talking about. It is Harvest Moon 64 with more options and quality of life changes, and it just feels good to plonk those blueberries and cranberries into wine barrels to ferment into a juice for a pretty lady. Unlike most modern games, this one actually has replay value too, even if you have to wait a couple years before diving back in. I do like Stardew Valley and I will remember it for years to come. And number one, Death Stranding. What can I say? I laughed at and mocked the package delivery simulator as much as the next guy, but when I actually started to play it, I was shocked at how good it was. Once again, atmosphere is everything here, and it is one beautifully horrifying adventure that, for as minimal and tedious as it seems, it actually ended up being the one game most recently that I'd say impacted me the most. I even replayed it a full second time immediately after beating it because I didn't want the feeling to be over yet. So there you have it, my quick list of modern games I've played that left an impact on me. If you'd like to see me play these games, check out my playlist section as they have all been covered on the channel already. Thanks for watching!